G'day, Yoda again from Australia on uh, Mickey BRC's channel. Uh, Mikel can't be here today. I'm actually just getting ready and packing up to head off on a gliding adventure up to far north Queensland in Australia, Burketown, to chase the morning glory wave in my new touring motor glider. So very excited about that. I thought I'd get a quick update on the Linton turbine, which is 80 slash 95. It's actually quite a powerful turbine in quite a small airframe. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. I've had 38 flights. I'll step you through that shortly and we'll focus in on the turbine. The uh, 339, I'll give you some information about it and how it's performing as well. But uh, ultimately, lots of fun loving the turbine. After, excuse me, I probably sound a little bit tired. I had a big day yesterday out flying. Uh, not this machine though. On the 38th flight, it got quite interesting. So much power pumping through this machine and I'm getting quite confident with it, obviously. And <laughs> number 38, I was down low as usual, hooking around and I'm holding 60% throttle on for up to 30 seconds, which really motivates this beautiful machine. It was really fast and I was down at tree height, left hand turn out in front of myself and for no reason it uncon um, <laughs> uncommanded roll into the turn and it was pulling elevator at the same time and it was quite shocking what was happening was and i didn't know i pulled off the throttle rolled wings level it pulled out thankfully that's why we got it back i didn't even need to apply any more throttle uh it was tearing the thrust tube out of the back of it i was holding that much power into it it had caused thrust vectoring the way the airflow was coming out of where it's torn away it's trying to implode in on itself and it decided to roll into the turn, which was pretty ugly. But anyway, got it back. Uh, and Linton Jet, uh, Leo from Linton Jet is sending me a new upgraded thrust tube. Thank you very much. So after all that, I will be uh, reinstalling the new thrust tube and continuing with the testing. The turbine itself, wow, <laughs> what a fantastic machine. These guys really know their product. Uh, they've done a lot of testing. They've obviously sold a lot of turbines into the drone market. Therefore, they've had to make a quality product that lasts. Some of the information coming from Leo I've learnt is the product is actually full five axis digitally machined from billet, from stock and a very high quality aircraft grade alloy with a lot of nickel in it uh, obviously can handle the temperatures it gives you confidence uh, in the whole machine because the tolerance is the way they machine it's it's not die cast parts it gives you confidence because these things are rotating at huge rpms 160,000 rpm at full throttle producing nearly 10 kilos of thrust you want those compressor wheels to be really strong the fan uh, the um, the blades on the compressor, all those sort of components need to hold together and so far so good. Plus the bearings inside there are really quality German brand bearings that uh, Leo has sent me details on. So you can feel confident with this. Brushless starter motor, brushless pump, everything's just working so well. The biggest feature I love about this and this is the new technology that's emerging in the hobby. This is it. So everything's in here. And when I said in my first, or our first video that's on uh, Mickey BRC's channel, my scales were saying this turbine was 1100 grams. It seemed heavy. People were commenting saying that seems very heavy, but everything is in this turbine. And also understand it's my scales. They're just kitchen scales. They're not uh, calibrated. I think the factory said 1050 or 1030 grams. But still, it's comparable to other turbines, but the best part is everything's inside there. You've only got a brushless pump. That means you can simply take the, the wires out of here, have another pump, four bolts, you're good to go into another model and you can go fly. So if you had, say, a, a L39, a F16, or anything else of this sort of calibre, a little bit bigger than this, Away you go, you can have three or four models and just transplant the turbine from one to the next to the next. So I think that's a fantastic selling point. Some other things we've learned about 
the Linton 80 slash 95 is that uh, if you inadvertently plug your receiver wire in around the wrong way, it won't hurt anything. They've got circuit protection. Um, the other plugs for power and for the pump, you really can't get them mixed up. They are two different plugs and they are directional plugs. They're very, very good quality, like the um, XT30 style in one of them and a uh, quite a unique little plug in the other. So that makes it very user-friendly. It's very hard to damage anything. The programming of it with the quite large color screen is very, very easy. And I'm just working with Leo and the factory to do an English version of that manual. Just put it into some, uh, do the interpreting and uh, put it in some words that make it easy for everyone to understand. Watch this space. This is gonna be a great turbine on the market to buy. It's gonna be um, very, very cost effective, especially when Ostars, Steve, g'day, shout out to you, mate. Um, thank you again for supplying this whole package. Uh, Ostars has got some great ideas where they've identified some awesome aircraft, both in the foam and also composite, that are gonna suit this turbine so well. And it's gonna be super cost effective and Seriously, guys, reliable. The throttle response on this turbine is insane. It's so much fun. If you come from an EDF background, uh, look, it's gonna be quite an easy transition. You can't just plug everything in and just roar into it. You've got to take some steps, uh, understand the engine, that sort of thing. But ultimately, the big thing is the throttle response. You're gonna get power that comes through fairly quickly instead of having to wait three, four seconds on some turbines, which does catch people out. So this will be a great turbine to step up as a first turbine. And the great news is they're bringing out a full range of turbines right up to some really big, powerful stuff like 26 kilos of thrust. So there's some good stuff coming from Linton, guys. As far as the airframe goes, the MB339 as supplied, I did make some changes, well, quite a few changes, <laughs> let's face it, didn't have enough fuel on board. So this fuel tank, the bottom one was 1350 mil. They supplied the UAT. I love these little UATs with the, the top hat on them. They work really well, they never have bubbles. Uh, that wasn't gonna be enough for this quite large turbine. So I put the extra fuel tank up on top here. Now I've got upwards of two liters of fuel, about 2.1 actually. I'm flying for seven minutes pretty flat out, having a lot of fun and landing with substantial fuel left in for go-arounds, which I've never had to do anyway. The, uh, to, to allow that to happen, I actually took out the servo in the belly of this thing that had an air brake. Never use air brakes anyway, pointless. It just allowed the tank to sit down flat on the floor. I secured that in. And then I just had to massage the foam to allow this tank to fit up here. Plumbed it all up. Good idea, guys, no matter what you buy, pull your tanks out, do your own plumbing, don't rely on the factories. Always lock wire everything, always test your system first. Very, very good tips. The batteries I went with, three, two S, uh, sorry, three S, 2,200 milliamp hour batteries. They're interchangeable, so the turbine uses the most power by interchanging, by rotating through from one day to the next, I can get up to 10 flights out of this without having to charge the batteries. It's not power hungry. The turbine's not that power hungry. It all just works. So guys, before I went away on my little adventure, I just wanted to give you an update. So signing off, uh, I'll do a next video in the next couple of weeks when I get back from my adventure. So everyone fly safe, have fun. Until next time, Yoda, see ya.